Yeah, so Vosh, let's start with your religion doesn't improve anything. And yet, as we look at the happiness indexes of the people who are the most religious, they seem to be the most happy. They're also having the most children. They're also divorcing the least. They seem to, out of all the metrics, have the least amount of mental illness. How could you possibly, with a straight face, make the claim that religion doesn't improve anything? All of your positions are material in nature, and they don't seem to work that well. They don't seem to answer the greater questions. Right off the bat, we see the analytical issues. First of all, tracking this onto the number of babies had. Historically, the most babies humans have had have been during uh, pre-modern medieval periods where women were pumping out 11 kids, half of them would die in the fields. The number of children you have has nothing to do with how happy you are. Likewise, with divorces and marriages. Again, we would have to argue then that the <laughs> happiest marriages must have necessarily been in the ones uh, in, I don't know, England prior to Henry VIII. You would point back to some time where it was illegal to divorce. These aren't real metrics of happiness. People in general are getting less happy. That is absolutely the case. Yeah, but Why the religious seem to be other... less so via self-reporting. And the religious are having the most amount of children and i have the stats here if you'd like to review them i can show this to you and demonstrate it to you pew research has been following this very closely for a number of years and their indexes seem to be quite good and yet your materialist outlook seems to claim that libertarian socialism materialism will save you and yet we're closer to that worldview than ever and yet mental illness and all of these factors which lead to unhappiness is higher than ever we've least of all with the religious tracking We've, so first of all, as I established, birth rates are irrelevant to this discussion if we're talking about happiness. Second of all, um, mental illness as well. We've only started tracking mental illness in a meaningful way in the past couple of decades. So this is another factor which you can't reasonably tie to a lack of religiosity. In fact, if you go to our insane asylums and people with severe mental illness issues, you'll find plenty of people there who are deeply religious. The idea that mental illness tracks perfectly onto, um, or even remotely, onto a lack of religiosity is just absolutely not the case. Well, how can you make that claim? That actually makes no sense. You say birth rates can't be tied to happiness, and yet if you have children, you are happier. How how could you you possibly say that birth rates wouldn't track onto that? Of course they would. Do you think people were like at their happiest in India in like 1880 when the average number of children had by every mother was like eight or nine? At yeah, a time but during this is a, this is a no, red, no, no, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, I'm this asking, is a red like, herring. It has nothing to do no, with no, no, anything. No, no, no. Answer, answer the question. If I have no idea. I don't are, think it's relevant. I have no okay, idea. Okay, I, I think that birth rates do not track perfectly onto happiness. In fact, I don't think there's yeah, any but that wasn't my claim between them at all. That really you was made not the claim my claim. That my... higher birth rates are indicative of greater happiness. No, my no, no, no. My claim, just so that you don't straw man it is that okay. women who have children seem to be happier than women who do not have children that when you look at the birth rate of course that's going to map onto that as women are the ones who have the children <laughs> so obviously if they're happier uh they're going to have more children and as mothers they're going to have more children at least this is what the pew be, uh... research shows do you think there might be a confounding variable there like maybe the economic stability which allows people to have children might uh make people you know happier then why are the poorest people having the most of them because poorer people sometimes are happier and sometimes they have more children and what or maybe make a as my, poorer as for my happier. argument maybe there isn't a strong relationship between how many children right. you're having so and how happy so what you are. so what would make poorer people happier than people with all of this materialism that's really weird vosh I didn't say that. I was indicating that I think this is an argument in favor of my point. I just don't think these two statistics track on to each other very well. Well, no, and I, I don't think I don't think you do either, frankly. Um, I think that the the reality that when we talk about like what makes people unhappy or what problems we can solve socially, the actual like fabric of a person's mental wellness is so complicated and so multivariate that I would immediately distrust anyone who tried to reduce it to a single variable. I'm more interested. We're in... not. Re- hang on. Hang on. We're not reducing anything to a single variable. That's one. OK. Nobody said the issue is not multifaceted. However, for mm-hmm. you to make kind of this bold claim and gloss it over when you're pinned down on the fact that the people who are the poorest, they seem to be the happiness by at, at, or the happiest. At least that's what your claim just was a second ago. No, so I if that's that. true, then obviously it must be something other than materialism, which is causing them to be happier. What would you say that that is, Vosh? I didn't make that claim. I you, said you that there are plenty of no. I I said maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's this as ways of indicating that I don't feel there's a strong track between 
birth rates and happiness. Birth rates are higher in many parts of the world that are a lot poorer and less happy than the United States. In the United States, it is absolutely <laughs> the case that poor people tend to have more children. There's also a racial or ethnic element to that as well. But this isn't a perfect one to one track. For instance, rural areas where the cities are drying up and dying, there are people who have lots of kids, sure, but they're not happy. I mean, we, we make you know, uh, I guess sort of reductive comments about white trash families. And I don't think that's fair, but it is certainly the case that, you know, there are plenty of households out there where you have both many children and not a lot of happiness. Well, then this I is another it's, problem it's with the materialist worldview. Vosh, when you claim, make this kind of bold claim, don't you think that economics really has a lot to do with whether or not people are having children? And then you cite that the poorest people are having the most amount of children. Right. This is a very strange argument from you. So I'm hoping that you no. can qualify this and make this make sense to me. I don't I don't think anything that I said there doesn't make sense. The characteristics that might lead a person to have a lot of children are incredibly complicated. I mean, if you want a full rundown, it correlates more often to people who are poorer, I imagine, because people who are poorer often have a harder time with regards to family planning and management. They also have less strict uh, life plans when it comes to their own career. They're also Poor more religious around. Uh, sometimes, Most but of the that time. doesn't, but they're not the happiest. In fact, there's a very large degree of opioid addiction and unhappiness in highly religious rural communities with lots of children. So it's almost like your attempt to reduce these variables to some kind of simple correlative line, uh, doesn't actually work when you look at the material okay. reality. Well, of first of all, history. first of all, backing up, you and I have both agreed already that it's multifaceted. Right. I'll agree that that's true, but that doesn't mean that some variables aren't far more important than others, which is why you cited an economic variable to begin with. Moving into this, when you're talking about uh, this this portion of the topic, which is uh, birth rates, which have become absolutely disastrous everywhere, not just in the wow. West, but globally. This was all due to antinatalist campaigning from oh, leftists. Wait, what's disastrous about our birth rates? They're in free fall collapse, Fosh. Yeah, they've lowered as they have in every industrialized country. No, sure. in all countries, almost all countries everywhere, with the exception of a few African nations and Middle Eastern nations. And those are dropping off quickly, too. Yes. Industrialized countries produce fewer children because you no longer need eight little tykes to run the farm, of course. Uh, well, no, that's not the only reason that we have a collapse in birth rate. It's because women are getting married older instead of younger. Now, you could make the argument they get an education. You, well, you could make the argument that this is due to. Uh, you know, better family planning or, or uh, something like this, I suppose. Uh, but still, ultimately, if you want to keep your population high, thus keeping your economy good uh, in all nations on planet Earth, you can't just shift around people who don't exist because the birth rates lower everywhere. How Our do you plan? Our populations are still growing. No, well, no, they're actually plateauing quickly. And the, uh, the last U.N. report showed that, but the most modern U.N. report on population demographics, which I have in front of me, show that it's much more catastrophic than the U.N. previously predicted, citing that China, and this, this came in from a study from, um, <clears throat> sorry, it's on Forbes, I can link it well, over China's to China's situation you. is specific to the, the one-child policy. I, don't, I think that was very dumb of the CCP. Yeah. I'm talking about here but in a the 500, West, They're talking about a 500 million... 500 million reduction in the Chinese population, potentially by 2050, 2060. That's right around the corner. That's a okay. massive population reduction. Japan, within 200 years, is actually slated to not exist. It's not. It's slated to not exist due to the population. So, what, so is the world population growing or decreasing right now? Right now it's plateauing. The world population, as I understand it, is still mm -hmm. growing at a yes, decent clip. But it's I going, mean, it went from six but it's billion plateauing. to eight billion. Just yes. in my, sure, that's fine. We mm -hmm. have a finite and then it free falls. Of space. And then it's projected to free fall by every UN analyst and by every uh, scientific metric that you can possibly look at who has looked at this. It's expected to free fall and possibly stabilize at six billion in the next hundred and fifty years uh, to two hundred years. But the estimates, I don't think the. Here, what, what what UN analyst? Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, assuming that's the case, um, um, okay. I mean, it can't grow forever. Like, let's just say, let's presume that information is accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, if that seems fine, I mean, what what should we have? 10, 12, 15? Well, so here's billion? why. Here's why this is problematic, Vosh, because uh, the population bomb, which was a book that was dropped all over. 
uh, the African nations and India in order to reduce the populations of those nations significantly. It turns out that was very problematic because, as it turns out, the more people you have, the more work gets done and the more people get fed. Right now, due to the increase in population, there is more global food production, the ability to deliver this food globally to people who need it, than there ever has been in human history. That's what happens with pro-natalist policies versus anti-natalist policies. Okay, wait, you just answer the what population do you think it should stop at so okay it might stop at six billion what meaningfully is the difference oh, i think that the the earth could seven the earth can easily according to analysis have up to 25 30 billion people with with pretty pretty you know it's pretty uh pretty regular ease is with, that within I, that confines that I, of those numbers ideal how is that better than what we have because more what, people six, more yeah. people equals more work less starvation Less starvation not, for populations, more work for infrastructure building, more work for, I mean, even look at the yeah, U.S. labor fewer, force now, one of the biggest but fewer problems. fewer people mm -hmm. to cater to. This is, this is very, very silly. The idea that everything gets better the more people are on Earth, it's just not the case. First of all, like, uh, people, the, the number of humans that are going to end up on the planet and, like, sort of plateau out at, that's not the same as our maximum carrying capacity. You don't want to hit the maximum carrying capacity for well, the we're same nowhere reason near that it. Yeah, I'm saying you don't problem. want to. And the reason for that is the same reason you don't want to hit the maximum carrying capacity of an elevator or a restaurant. You know, yeah, but we don't even know what the ideal. maximum carrying capacity is, but we do know I, we're nowhere just, near it. And we're I also just declining. I don't understand what the issue is with these broader trends. Um, well, I've just explained if, it to if, you. You don't want populations in free fall collapse. You don't even no, have enough hands want... to do the work. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you don't real... have that so, now in the United States. The amount of work, first of all, we do. We get plenty of work done in this country. And second of all, the idea that, sure, you have less people doing work, but you also have less people for whom to do the work. Like the idea that uh, you would be doing the same amount of labor if there were 30 billion people on Earth as you have to now with 8 billion people. No, on Earth man. No, no, no. Labor is scalable. You need to understand labor is okay, scalable. So I, I don't. I so don't like when you combine reasonable. two people together to do a job, it doesn't get done twice as fast. It gets done four or five times as fast. That's highly reductive and not the case for all things. There are plenty of things like regional economic limits or non scalability or lacking in land area or climate change changing the available give land. Me a, give, me a, give me a type no, no, of. No, job or I, occupation where that's true not, of there's not any i don't have to provide any argument here because the premise i'm arguing against is nonsensical let me construct so you have an no ideology argument. let me well you have to provide an idea i did first. and the idea you're providing is what if we had an ideology that made everyone have as much babies as possible but you need to sell me on this being a good idea because i don't care like i'm not sold on this i want people who are alive to be happy i want the human species to do well i think that the human species uh did pretty well at six billion i'm sure it would do pretty well at eight or ten or whatever but the idea of orienting all of my political beliefs around okay. getting some kind of max so i'll try a different population. angle for you then if that's your approach you do agree that you do want some people on planet earth right at least some uh, number ideally. of them yeah, sure. I mean, okay, I want so human what number would that be save. from your perspective? I don't. I don't care. That's the thing. That okay. Well, then, then number, what's the argument here? <laughs> so that, we, both well, no, you, we both want people. We both want people. And if the birth rate, how, if the birth rate you, reduces, so a population collapses, and there's no people. That bad. So we can agree on that. You have to explain to me how shifting our entire like um, the, the political mindset to accommodate some arbitrary goal that you've just made up in front of me is necessary at all. I think that if it we can't build, be arbitrary, if you agree, we need humanity. If we no, the hey, end point is well, still well, let, me, let me jump in and bridge the gap really quick so well, really really quickly i just want to ask like or i just want to put forward like the point here really really quickly okay i think that we should build good political systems that make people happy and encourage growth and economic stability and all those wonderful things mm -hmm. i do not think we need to orient everything about some kind of psychotic pronatalist perspective where we try to keep women out of colleges and in the home so every single one of them has like seven children i don't right, think well, that's nobody well, okay me, first of all well, that's well, that's well, well, you're, well, all you're doing there all you're doing there is framing i never made the argument that women okay. must do anything what I told you is that we have a birth rate that's in free fall. You agree that we need to at least have some humanity, which means you have to at least replace the people who are in existence. So you and I can at least agree that every human being should probably have at least one other human being to replace them, right? Or if not, uh, there needs to be some number of humans on planet Earth. So if that's true, and you and I agree that that's true, then having a declining birth rate, that would be catastrophic for both of our worldviews.